Machu Picchu Machu Picchu I heard a kitten sneeze Pachui What word? Huena Huena Picchu Huena Picchu Welcome to the podcast. I'm Corey. I'm Natalie. And we are the Art History Babes. Today we're doing a baby episode and we're recording it for YouTube. So you can check that out on our YouTube channel if you want to like see our faces and see some images while we talk. We're talking about Machu Picchu. Yeah, this one goes out to you, Cassie. She's Peruvian. Oh, <laughs> it's like she, she was just really confused there. A thing. big fan of Machu Picchu. Just a huge fan. <laughs> We've been outside refurbishing an old, old picnic table and, mm -hmm. and benches. And we're dirty, very dirty <laughs> right now. We're gonna talk about another, <laughs> another wonder of craftsmanship. <laughs> <laughs> Machu Picchu. The stone city of Machu Picchu stands 2,430 miles above sea level, embedded within the tropical rainforest of the Peruvian Andes. This archaeological site is located northwest of Cusco, Peru, and was built in the mid 15th century. This site is known to be used by the Incan civilization for religious, ceremonial, astronomical, agricultural purposes. And agricultural purposes. <laughs> I love the idea of astronomical agricultural purposes. Oh. We're getting there. We're getting close. It is made up of approximately 200 structures and is divided <coughs> into an upper and lower half to separate farming and residential areas. The Inca rose to power in the mid-1400s. The Incan Empire was the largest empire in pre-Columbian America and stretched for 2,500 miles down the Pacific coast of South America, so approximately the width of the continental U.S. Machu Picchu is the most well-known icon of the Incan civilization and was built in the center of the Incan Empire above the Sacred Valley, approximately 50 miles northwest of Cusco, Peru. Machu Picchu is often referred to as the Lost City of the Incas, However, this is a common misconception as the title is actually more fitting for the city of Vilcabamba, Peru, which was the last refuge of the Incan people before they fell to Spanish conquests. The Incan civilization only ruled for 100 years. The Incan people fled their territories, including Machu Picchu, and then they hung out in the city of Vilcabamba, which is the lost city of the Incas, for 35 more years until it was destroyed by Spanish conquistadors in 1572. <laughs> Spanish conquistadors, get out of here. Machu Picchu was constructed for the first Incan emperor, Pachacuti, Inca Yupanqui. Okay? Nailed it. In the mid 15th century, as his royal residence. The estate was constructed into a mountainside which overlooks the Urumbamba River, as well as mountain peaks known as Afus. Not only did this location provide a pleasant climate and a natural fortress, the area was considered the sacred location of ancient deities who were said to dwell in the Afus mountain peaks. The estate was built to house royalty, accommodate staff, and included religious shrines. Emperor Pachacuti's residence was also located near the first fountain to ensure that the king would have the purest water to drink. Only the purest for Pachacuti. That's what they say. <laughs> you know that expression? <laughs> Only the purest for Pachacuti. <laughs> oh man, that would be a very niche like bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it. <laughs> Would you guys buy a only the purest for Pachacuti sticker if we put it in the store? <laughs> Contact us, let us know. We'll make it. We will make it for you. The construction of Machu Picchu is of great interest to many. Uh, you've probably heard of it before. I've heard of it. I think... Even if you don't know what it is, you've probably heard of it. Oh yeah, Machu Picchu is, is kind of a buzz... buzz... Architectural wonder. I don't know. It's like a very fringe buzzword. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's like, yeah, Machu Picchu. That's a thing. Incas did not have wheels or tools made of steel and iron to help in the construction of this vast stone city. 
Additionally, they did not use mortar when building. Instead, they cut the stones with careful precision and then fit them together all snug. Wow. No gluey substance of any kind to keep no. them together. Just, just fit them in there precisely. Interestingly, this building technique serves an important geological purpose and has been crucial to Machu Picchu's survival over the years. Peru experiences a great deal of earthquake activity, and the site of Machu Picchu is actually built atop two fault lines. The area experiences regular earthquakes in which the stones are said to dance. They bounce and then they fall back into place, which sounds really cool to see. <laughs> <laughs> From afar, yes. Yeah. <laughs> if the Inca had not built the structures the way they did, many of them would have crumbled by now. Mm -hmm. One of the most notable features of Machu Picchu is the layered outcrops. The rock outcrops were meticulously arranged by fitting stones together and were designed to harmonize with the landscape architecture of the estate, which also included fountains and terraces. Terraces were a part of the landscape design, but more importantly served as a means of planting crops on mountainsides without causing erosion. The carved steps in the mountain allowed for easier planting and maximized the available space. So some pretty advanced agricultural techniques. Mm -hmm. Additionally, many of the most impressive feats of engineering are several engineering projects that took place underground. It has been estimated by engineer Kenneth Wright that about 60% of construction at the site was underground. So 60% of Machu Picchu is, you can't see it, it's underground. Wow! This included deep building foundations and advanced drainage systems made of crushed rock, which were also a necessity since this site experiences very frequent torrential rains. So this area is kind of like a natural disaster hotspot, which makes it yeah. all the more intriguing. For real, that it's lasted this long? Yeah, it's, it's in this kind of hidden spot and in, in not a spot that really lends itself to uh, safety yeah. <laughs> or, or sustainability. When you were talking about the construction, I was thinking about like high stakes Tetris. Oh and yeah, I yeah. I think they won. I think they figured it out. Yeah, yeah. they beat the game. <laughs> So Machu Picchu was abandoned in the early 16th century, about 100 years after it was built, and some suggest that this was due to the invasion of the Spanish conquistadors, but others have suggested that the site was abandoned before the conquest. Regardless, the Spanish did not find out about the site and its existence remained largely unknown until the early 20th century. It's pretty impressive. In 1911, Machu Picchu became known to the outside world. Local farmer Melchior Ortega led Yale professor Hiram Bingham to the site. Bingham is credited with discovering the site and revealing it to the world at large. He and several successive academics would spend their careers studying the site. There are also some really spectacular uh, photographs that Hiram Bingham took. They're kind of the first photographs of mm -hmm. Machu Picchu. And they're, they're really interesting, kind of. They're also an example of some of the first, like, archaeological fo photography as well. So check those out. Interestingly, Bingham wasn't actually looking for Machu Picchu during this expedition. He was instead hoping to find Vilcabamba which we talked about earlier, the hidden city that the Inca escaped to during Spanish conquest, so the actual lost city of the Incas. Bingham vehemently argued that Machu Picchu and Vilcabamba were the same place. They're not. He was wrong. This theory was not disproven until after his death in 1956. So he went to the grave thinking Vilcabamba and Machu Picchu were the same place. That's all right. Wherever he ended up, I'm sure he got told. He <laughs> you were wrong. <laughs> Can you imagine showing up to like the pearly gates and like, it's like first, the first off, thing you're told you're wrong. <laughs> Wipe that smug smile off your face. <laughs> He's met by Pachacuti like at the pearly gates. <laughs> Pachacuti's like psych. <laughs> Furthermore, there are issues surrounding Bingham's discovery of Machu Picchu. Not only did a local farmer lead him to the site but there were three families of farmers living on the site at the time of the discovery. So while he was the first to study the site academically and spread that knowledge to the outside world, he was not the first person to, in contemporary civilization to discover the site. But he was the first white guy with a camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just an important thing to remember. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. An important thing to remember throughout history. Like, it, it, it's, it was still an important discovery, and he documented it, and he shared it with people, and that's important. But a lot of times, the person who discovered a place wasn't the first person to actually go there. Yeah. Just okay. keep an eye out for that elitism woven into history mm. all the time. Everywhere, all the time. Uh, stay woke, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> what was our farmer's name? I think, I think we need to start promoting it. Melchior Ortega. There we go. Thanks, Melchior. The best. <laughs> You're the man, Melchior. <laughs> man, goofy midday uh, after being in the sun is just as good as a few glasses of wine. I know, we are we are sleepy right now, you guys. <laughs> Much remains unknown about the exact uses of many areas of the site. If you know anything about Machu Picchu, I think there's a lot of mystery surrounding it. I watched a documentary, it was a National Geographic documentary called like Machu Picchu Decoded, you know, that mm -hmm. like... We're trying to decode this, like, it's not even an ancient site, but really old site, mm -hmm. and explore the mysteries surrounding it. The Incas had no written language, so there are no records to explain what Machu Picchu was actually used for. This has led theorists to speculate wildly. As they do. They do. There are some good theories. One theory, temples and altars cut from granite suggest that ritual, possibly religious ceremonies, were performed at the site. For example, stones cut in the shape of surrounding mountains are displayed like holy icons. Um, there's some really good photos of those. They're, they're really beautiful, like large cut stones that are meant to mirror these mountains surrounding the site, which were also, like the mountains were thought to harbor like gods. Sweet. There's a religious overtone there. There's evidence to suggest that no matter what the ultimate use of the site was, that there was a religious aspect yeah. to it. As there were for a lot of construction that still is around. Like spirituality was interwoven into so yeah. much of daily life. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Additionally, the Intihuatan is a sacred pillar that is situated at a high point in the center of the site and is also in alignment with the four mountain gods of supreme importance that also happen to be aligned with the cardinal directions. So there are like four mountains surrounding the site that are aligned with the cardinal directions that there were gods associated with these mountains. Mm -hmm. And then this pillar is kind of a high point of the Machu Picchu site, but also like greater alignment with with the mountains mm -hmm. and the gods in the mountains. Yes, all of it. All of it, yes. Some believe Machu Picchu may have been a military stronghold. However, it does not have a defensive wall, which seems a bit peculiar for a military fortress. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, it could have been used as a form of psychological warfare. The complex site was meant to kind of seal a conquest by Pachacuti and act as basically a sign to others that Pachacuti shan't be messed with. He shan't. <laughs> he shan't. Cause he, he will drink his pure water in peace. Because <laughs> <laughs> he created this really impressive mm -hmm. architectural feat. You yeah, know? that would be quite alarming. To come yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Like what is this? Yeah. As we mentioned, there was clearly an estate for royalty, so it is possible that the entire site was just a giant retreat for nobility. Spring break. Spring break. So much of you too. I'm just imagining like MTV like Spring Break yeah, live. Yeah, me too. Like, <laughs> Many man-made and natural structures align with astronomical events. So this likely had a spiritual aspect, mm -hmm. but also scientific. Mm -hmm. And another kind of big mystery surrounding Machu Picchu is how they transported the stones to the site. We don't really know how they got them there. That's kind of a similar mystery that we hear with, you know, the Egyptian pyramids mm -hmm. and the... and. Stonehenge. Stonehenge, that's the one. Remember when I had a student who called it Hedgehog? Oh, <laughs> uh, the mysterious ancient site of Hedgehog. <laughs> and that's kind of, I think, a general mystery that surrounds a lot of older architectural sites, but yeah, we don't really know how the stones got there, and we don't really know how they were able to cut the stones so precisely without steel and iron tools. So. 
Who knows? If you got any ideas, send them our way. We'd love to hear them. A hidden temple named the Temple of Moon was discovered in 1936. It is tucked along a trail on Huana Pichu, the mountain peak seen in many photos of the site of Machu Picchu. The Temple of the Moon is a cave that was transformed into a religious ceremonial shrine. Inside the cave, a throne is carved into the rock. Beside the throne are steps that lead deeper into the cave, an area that some believe was once used to house mummies. Ooh, mummies. Mummies. So, uh, the the people of, of Machu Picchu, the ancient Inca, were into mummies. They did a lot of mummifying. They mummified their leaders. They also... Child mummies have been found. Like, child sacrificial mummies. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, dark. Mummies were a thing. You know, to mummify a person, child or adult, like, it was a respectful thing yeah, to do. Yeah, it means they believed in the afterlife and that that person was... Had a one-way ticket. Going to the gods. They're yeah. getting them ready for the gods. So, uh, so yeah, mummies have been found kind of in and around the site, like outside of the site. Mm -hmm. And they think that this, this secret temple of the moon was a special site for mummified, like, important people, I guess. Mm. The stonework in the temple is thought to depict the three planes of the Incan religion. The Hanan Pacha, the heavens, is depicted by the condor. The K Pacha, the earth, physical life, is depicted by the puma. And Ukju Pacha, the underworld, is depicted by the snake. There's some cool symbolism there. Mm -hmm. In 1983, Machu Picchu was designated a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. Currently, Machu Picchu is a wildly popular tourist attraction. I want to go. It's been on my list I since I was... Who was just there. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I've wanted to go since, like, seventh grade. Like, <clears throat> really want to check out Peru. Would love to check out Machu Picchu. Yeah, same. Um, it's so popular that limits have been put on the number of visitors allowed into the site per day. And it's also one of those things that who knows how much longer they're really going to be letting people go. So if you have a chance, yeah, take it. it for sure. The trip can be a little spendy when you add up train tickets, entry fees, and the bus trip up and down the mountain. However, if you're more of the outdoorsy adventurous type and up for a challenge, you can hike Hiram Bingham's original route for free. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a fairly strenuous, albeit beautiful climb that takes around 90 minutes. So... 90 minutes ain't bad. Yeah, it's a great little adventure. If you have been to Machu Picchu and you've got some anecdotes or some information you learned, please send it our way. We'd love to hear a story. Um, before we head out, what do you, do you think that there was an ultimate purpose to Machu Picchu? What's your gut telling you? My gut says, yeah, but <clears throat> do I know what that is? Absolutely not. <laughs> I have no idea, and I don't but think you, I'm meant to know. You, but... um, you didn't focus on circa 1400s pre-Columbian architecture? That wasn't your focus of study, Matt? <laughs> I'm shaking my head. <laughs> no. I was really hoping you were going to know the answer. <laughs> I don't. Maybe I'll see if Cassie has some, like, magical Peruvian instinct. <laughs> we'll take her there and see if something happens. <laughs> she just knows? Like, Maybe. I mean, I guess she if... She hasn't been back since she was a kid. Maybe. And if you believe in, like, collective unconsciousness and that... Just get her to meditate for a while. The spirit... If you believe that the spirit of our ancestors, like, lives in our blood... Maybe, actually. Maybe Pachacuti was her great, 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 you know, a few more greats grandfather. That'd be so cool. It would be. I don't know either, obviously. It's clear it had some spiritual, mm -hmm. like, that's clear that there was, there was religious stuff going on there, but whether it was just, like, a hangout for the elite or an actual, like, city or what yeah. exactly it was, I'm not sure. Maybe a real crazy burial ground? Like, Ooh. Like the... Uh, oh, that was another Indian, thing. The Incan version of a... Pyramid? Um, on the documentary I watched, an interesting thing, when Hiram Bingham showed up, they found lots of, lots of skeletons, lots of dead bodies, and like 80% of them were women. Oh no. <laughs> oh no! The theory was that they had these, like, the most beautiful women were chosen basically f to serve the gods. But, History has not been kind but I think, to females. I think they've maybe disproved that. I that so. they think there was another reason that it was 80% women. I'm not entirely sure. If you Child guys... Birth? Oh, maybe. 
If you guys know, if you know about this whole 80% uh, skulls of women at Machu Picchu issue. Please let us know. Let us know. It's an interesting topic. I uh, just heard about it last night, which is why I do not have further information. <laughs> send us your emails. Send us your thoughts. Check out our YouTube channel. Check out our store. Get on our current giveaway before it's too late. Don't miss out, guys. It'll be sad. You'll be very, very sad. Oh, Write us a review. I haven't asked people to do that in a long time. Yeah, that's always great. Uh, we Those are good. And just if you haven't and you have a minute or two to just write us a quick review, we seriously appreciate it. Those mm -hmm. are great and mm -hmm. needed and appreciated. And we appreciate you for listening to us. Yes. You're all wonderful. And uh, have a good time. Bye. Do you want to come say goodbye to our our YouTube people with oh, me? Oh shoot, yeah, I just bailed on her. Nat just bailed on you guys. <laughs> Sorry, that was so rude of me. Thanks for watching slash listening to our podcast on Machu Picchu. There will be links to the everything. I have links All to everything. Them. We'll be shown below. You guys are awesome. Bye. Until it was destroyed by the Spanish conquistador. Con. <laughs> <laughs>